I mean, and here's here's more of what bothers me now about about this list. So, all okay, right, forty is ma is the mandible claw. Fine. Thirty nine is uh, shake, rattle, and roll for honky tonk man. Fine. Okay. I I guess I think the rude awakening looked a lot like a million times better. But what do I know? Wait. So where's the root of wait rude awakening rude, in contrast rude to awakening the shake, number forty five? Is what number forty five? And shake, rattle, and roll is lower or higher? It's higher up on the list. It's thirty. See that? 39. That's ridiculous. Right. Um, and Rude was a bigger star than Honky Tonk, easily. I mean, I guess they want to play up that you know Honky Tonk Man was the, the the Intercontinental Champion for fifteen months, and he did it with the Shake Rattle and Roll because that's the devastating maneuver. I don't know. And Honky Tonk Man, he he talks nothing but trash about the company, doesn't he? Yeah, I, he does. Anyway, number okay. thirty-eight is Yokozuna's Bonsai Drop. Right now, I don't know how many people were watching wrestling in the early 90s when Yokozuna was an active member of the roster like a 650 pound guy jumping off of the of the second turnbuckle like and landing on your chest I'm convinced that that would be like in the top five honestly who has kicked out of that I was there someone like was there a moment where someone finally kicked I don't out remember of that? anybody ever kicking out of it the the only Close, no. The only the the closest thing we had was we had um. He, uh, he fell off the ropes when he was fighting Steve Austin in King of the Ring '96. The he fell in WrestleMania 10 and Brett pinned him. And I was there. I was there. In what was it? Survivor Series 1993. He was fighting Undertaker. He gives him the oh, the casket drop. match. No, this is this is when they first first encountered each other. It was in Survivor oh. Series. He gives him the bonsai drop, and he just, he gets he he gets up to do a second one, and like you know he gets up, climbs the turnbuckle again, and then Undertaker sits up as he's coming down for the second one, and you know and is completely unfazed by it. And that was like what ignited the feud between them. The Undertaker like came after him and was like, "All right, I'm the Undertaker. I'm gonna destroy you." And then you know that right. Led so elsewhere. people have no sold it or avoided it. But has no, no one's yeah, ever no, kicked no one's out. ever I don't remember anybody ever kicking out of it. So that's the buns I drop. Number thirty and this is this is the biggest F U I think. Number thirty seven <laughs> Flash Funks four hundred and fifty splash. <laughs> well <laughs> oh, first of all first of all Flash Funk much love to Scorpio, an amazing wrestler and a good 450. But the best four. Are you laughing that he's on the list or that his 450 is over other people's? Uh, that he, both that he's on the list and that he, he's on the list above Yokozuna. That the bonsai drop is not as powerful a maneuver as Flash Funk, not too cold Scorpio. But Flash Funk, that incarnation of that guy. I think you're too hung up on what's more powerful as they're saying what are the greatest finishers. What makes a finisher great, though? That's, this is what I'm saying. It's probably a combination of things. Now, I'm not saying I'm not with you on it, but, like, what a... Okay, here's, a, here's what I want to know. If the bonsai drop is so low, where's Rikishi's version of the bonsai drop? We see, now, I would, I would say I, I'm, I'm okay with Rikishi's version of the bonsai drop being less spectacular because he didn't weigh as much as Yokozuna. Well, is it on the list? I don't believe so, no. Let's look at... Let's let's break down the top you know, ten. No, he's Fuck. not... He's not... You no, know, it's not on the list. Let, let's break down the top ten. Let, right. Let's see what's going on you there. You want to jump right to the top ten? Yeah, let's jump right in. All right. I mean, unless there's any more atrocities that you want to get out there. Y you know, there aren't a lot... I mean, you know, there's a, like, for example, Rey Mysterio 619 is on there. Rey Mysterio hardly wins with the 619. See, the 619 is just the setup to his ever changing actual finisher because it was the West yeah. Coast pop and then dropping the dime. Then it was the splash off the ropes. Now the splash off the corner. I'm not saying any of those are bad. It's just the 619 is just the flashy little setup and it's, you know, always, you know, well, you know, regarded. And I think it's ridiculous, to be honest with you. Well, yeah, so we'll jump right to the top 10, because, you know... Uh, oh, and by the way, I, I don't know why... Well, we'll get to that in a second. So number 10 is The Sharpshooter by Bret Hart. Fine. Okay. I'm, I'm f f completely for that. <sighs> number 9, ahead of The Sharpshooter, is Jimmy Superfly Snuka Superfly. No. 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 Why? No. 
what, what did Jimmy Snuka do? Like, I'm not saying he wasn't a talented guy, but when you look back on his career, he didn't really have a staggeringly good career. Like he was, no, he was he's known for his match with Morocco at Madison Square Garden, mostly because friggin' Mick Foley was there. Honestly, look, I love Jimmy Snuka. I loved him as a kid. I think the big deal with the WWE loving him so much is that he was the first, like, I guess high flyer, but he did one top rope move, really? Right. I don't know. I mean, uh, I understand that was, the high, that was the high flyer thing back then, was if you did one move off the top rope, you were a high flyer. But, quote unquote. It, look, if that's so high up on the list, okay, where is the five star frog splash? Um, we get that. It's, that was somewhere, I think, in the 20, 32. RVD's five star frog class. And then Eddie Guerrero is number 13. Yeah, I see that if. I guess they're going for historical with the Jimmy Snooker because the frog splash is just a better version of a top rope splash. I mean, RVD's version is the best version if you look at it. Well, then. You know, uh, you to know look at it. Doesn't that put devastating the looking? Doesn't that put the 450 splash up there as well? Sure. But not Flash Funk's version. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, Who I, cared about Flash Funk? I, I, I know. I, well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm well, saying. Well, you know, list. I think here's the thing with the 450. They wanted the 450 on the list, obviously. It's a move that's great. But think about who's still good with the company that did the 450. Paul London, they, they hate him, and he hates the WWE. So they're not going to put him over. Uh, who else did the 450? Hoovy? Hooventude? No. Who else in the WWE did the 450? I... I uh, they got did Kidman? Kidman did a four fifty. Kidman did the shooting star press. Okay, I had that backward. Uh, yeah, no, I'm out of ideas for the four fifty. So did London. London did the shooting star forever until he came to WWE, and that was Kidman's deal. So he had to stop using it. All right. Well, let's move on with this list. Number eight. Number eight. Uh, Nature Boy Ric Flair's figure four leg lock. Okay, understandable. Something yeah. else had to be number nine, honestly. But sharpshooter yeah. figure four. Number That's seven. Progression. Number seven. Hogan's leg drop. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, it has to be in the top ten. You know, it's just a leg drop, but it was just think about the meaning behind that. Yeah. Number six. Shawn Michaels sweet chin music. Now this is where I have a problem. Okay. The sweet chin music should be in the top three because it has everything. It has all the elements of a great finisher. It can be done on anyone of any size. It can come out of many different. It can come at you many different ways. Uh, you can reverse into it. Um, it can come out of nowhere. It looks devastating, and it looks good and flashy, and it has a setup. The famous how you look to say this is it moment where they're setting up for their finisher. Uh, it has everything you need. And tell me what the next one is, and I guarantee you it's better than that. You see. You might actually be wrong on that one. Well, They're, I remember you, looking at this list, and I remember looking at it and saying that it This one is definitely open for debate. Well, the, the I think five is the DDT, right? Next is Jake the Snake Roberts DDT. That shouldn't be five. I definitely think that if there's something you were going to put above the Sweet Chin Music, it would be a DDT. That, like, the original DDT. That's fine. Now, what's the next four? All right, the next four is the Rock Bottom and People's Elbow. Okay. There's no way on this earth that that should be above the sweet chin and the DDT. I, it, I, I, I agree, but from but that is six, and then and but then from sweet chin DDT. From from the WWE being their own greatest mark, though, having to say that The Rock, who's you know the greatest of all time, the the most electrifying superstar, and then calling the People's Elbow the most electrifying move, you have to put it up there. It's, as high as you could possibly cram it. And unfortunately, it's number four because number three is the pedigree. Oh. <laughs> okay, right. Number two is a tombstone. Number one is a stunner, right? Right. Right, the, right. The stunner, okay. the stunner I'd absolutely agree with. Stunner is all those things that I mentioned with Shawn Michaels' sweet chin music. Right. Stunner has that, and it's stone cold. I have no problem with that. Uh, Tombstone to me is the most devastating in my opinion, so that's easily number two. I mean, it but then, it, 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 <clears throat> it killed Steve Austin. Yes, it did. Yeah. Uh, but then number three should be the DDT. Number four should be the Sweet Chin. Number five should be the Rock Bottom People's Elbow. And number right. six should be the Pedigree. 
That's no, how no, 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 no. I, I put the leg drop above the pedigree. Uh, I can go either way on that, but I do like the pedigree. And I would probably put move. Ric Flair's figure four above the pedigree. You just hate Triple H. I'm. You, so you put the sharpshooter beneath the pedigree? The sharpshooter? Bret Hart's sharpshooter? Uh, I think you're right about that. I think I gotta put the sharpshooter and, above the pedigree. And I feel like, honorable mention, it's worth mentioning, Macho Man's elbow off the top rope is number 12 on this list. You think the pedigree is a better move than Macho Man's elbow? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, oh, man. It's, <clears throat> I gotta, you gotta kind of separate the wrestler a little bit and just focus on the move, I guess. But I mean, lots of wrestlers have done elbows off the top rope, but this is the Macho Man elbow off the top rope. Right, so if there's going to be an elbow on this list, and it's going to be Macho Man's and right. his alone, but, you know, it doesn't have to be super high. It could just get a respectable place on the so, list. So, yeah, that, th these are some examples of my gripes with this list. All right, well, I'll tell you how I would switch around the top ten a little bit right there. I mean, yeah, we Otherwise, just... you know, the right... The right moves were in the top ten, except the superfly out of left field. Well, you're forgetting. You know. Well, you're forgetting a move here that I think is a pretty great move to see, and unfortunately, it's not here. Um, on the Bro list at all? Brock. Well, it's, it's on the list, but it's low. Brock Lesnar, F five, number oh. twenty nine. I think that's top thirty. Is yeah, okay. I need to remind you that Superfly Jimmy Snooker's number nine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, I would put the F5 a little higher, but, you know, we could sit here and talk all day on right. how the Superfly is in the top 10. And it's right, you know what? Insulting. I want people listening. I want them to email us. I want them to email. Give, yes. me, give me your top 10 best finishing moves in wrestling. And yes. you can include any you know, ROH, NWA, whatever you want. Throw it in there. Show at M2J.US.